Howdy folks, my name's Damon from RC Scale Models and today I'm back with you with a brand new kit from Tamiya. Uh, most kit quite anticipated, especially for myself. I've been waiting for this kit for a while. I've been watching this kit on the progress of Tamiya building it and doing the uh, CAD work and everything and it looks amazing. And they did a small video on how it goes together and it just falls together. It's superb. Um, now I've got my hands on one. This is the commercial version. If you are interested in buying this kit, yours is going to be exactly the same. It's a very large box. It's an expensive kit. It's highly detailed and highly recommended straight off the bat. It's uh, Lockheed Martin's F-35A Lightning II. Several marking options, countries. Sadly the UK version is not in this because we don't have the A. We have the B, which is the uh, aircraft version, uh, uh, carrier version. This is 135 scale. Let's take a look inside this one. 148 scale as well. So what's inside this box? It's a nice sturdy box. It's Tammy's kind of standard way of doing it. I do like this design. Nice uh, painting or print on the front. This side we've got one of the uh, versions. This is uh, Japanese Defense Force version. They do have the color callouts for the have gas glass color, but they're calling it for Japanese gray, uh, dark gray, gray, Japanese dark gray, and a hint of NATO brown. You are going to have to do color mixes, so it's five to one, seven to one, five to one. Uh, five to one is uh, Japanese. Uh, we've got uh, dark ghost grey mixed with NATO brown to do the nose. The aircraft colour they're calling out for Japanese dark grey LP14 mixed with uh, NATO brown 5 to 1 ratio. I'm not sure about that. The yeah, only have glass glass uh, colour I've got is from AK. We have this side of the box. We have a US version. Nope, sorry, that's not US version. That is. Looks like Royal Netherlands, maybe. Some of the weapons that the aircraft can carry. Some of the built up kit, weapons bay and beast mode where it has hard points. If you're interested, the uh, kit number is 125 or it's 8800 or item number 61124. It's loaded with plastic. So you've got the upper and lower halves of the aircraft. It's not a very big aircraft, but it's highly detailed. Here is all that RAM tape. A lot of manufacturers have tried to attempt this by trying to replicate it, and they've always seemed to get it quite chunky and thick. But I think Tamiya have probably done the best so far. You get two variants on this. You could do the early or up-to-date version. Early version is all this RAM tape is quite visible. It's in a light grey but the up-to-date version is all blend in, blended in as the same colour as the aircraft lower section have nose, wings intakes doors here's your part of your weapon bay massive wings support spar, cockpit, pilot pilot looks pretty damn good you get two canopies. I don't know why. Normal clear parts. The uh, part of the no uh, laser nose at the front, and just general lights and stuff. Weapons and doors and bombs and wheels. Wings, doors, landing gear, more wheels. There isn't a ton of parts, but. It's highly detailed and sharp and clean and crisp. And then two packs of paperwork. Normal paperwork and then decals. So we'll take a closer look at the markings, decals, instructions, and then the plastic. It'll be a little bit of a lengthy video. So this is the paperwork. Comes in a uh, sealed bag. Let's get into this. So what we have, we have some metal rods. I don't know what they're for, but we we will figure that out. You get your standard 
information sheet that they do print out in English and Japan and other country languages and stuff, which is nice on the history. So I do like I do like these. Um, normal instructions. That's quite a lengthy book. Tips and tricks as always. And then you get a large one, two, and then black and white. You got four black and white color profiles, and then you get two in color. One is for your stencil data for all markings and the American markings in color. So we'll take a closer look at that in a minute. Instructions. Let's move you in closer. So Tamiya's worksheet is, is black and white as always. You get all their colour call outs, everything is required. Hopefully what's used in the kit. Tools that are required, paints, glues, snippers, drills, cement. That's pretty standard. And then straight off the bat, very first section, pick your option before assembling the aircraft. So you've got version A, which is uh, United States version, version D is Royal Australian version, G version is Italians, no sorry Israeli, B version is Japanese, E is for Netherlands, H is for Korea, North Korean version or Republic of Korea actually you put it down as, uh, C is for Norwegian Air Force, F is for Italians and then J is for Royal Danish Air Force. I'll probably be doing the Americans or Australian version um, and straight off the bat just working your way along like you say pick one you're doing and then each one will correspond what's required for that country because there is differences so this section here is for for the C version which is for Norwegian they have this part on the aircraft but the other countries don't so a couple of drill, drill holes to turn to we've got this drill hole on the top and side needs to be a 10 to is one millimeter it's for the US version. These holes at the back is for the Norwegian version. This piece, like I mentioned, is for Norwegian version. This pitch section here is for American version. This is for all of the aircraft as standard. That's the Norwegian version. Just be careful as you work right along. So you've got a couple of detail parts to fill. Here is a correction sheet for some of the uh, mistakes they've made. They've crossed them out, so just be careful when you come to doing the rest of the aircraft. So we will look at that in a minute when we come to it. So step two, cockpit detail. There isn't much inside here. There's not like in the old days where there's tons of buttons and levers and everything. It's all touch screen now, just one big screen in the middle and everything runs off that. It's all computerized and there isn't a ton of detail in there anymore. So very simple, flight stick and just basic screen um, the side console again there's nothing there attaching it from the inside a couple of lumps and bumps on the inside and we've got this giant wheelbase section that has to be built up so there's like side walls and then landing gear and detail as you work along uh, inside of the landing gear they call that for FX2 which I believe is uh, white so it's signal white for the landing gear and you've got detail parts to paint like greys and blacks And then the actual nose assembly, it has internal parts to paint, a couple of detail parts, your landing gear goes in that you just built it just, just now. This here is internals, your intakes are two halves, it calls out for internals to be painted white and then the front part, the interior colour, uh, of the aircraft colour sorry, the half glass part. Um, which is seven to one, which is the uh, grey and brown mix. I don't know about that. I really don't know. Once that's done, you can attach your intakes to the nose. Don't forget your turbine blade. Again, they call out for X1, and the nose cone is X11. X11 is silver, I believe, and X1 is black. If I'm not mistaken, I'm not sure. I have to have a look. Attaching the, the bottom and the top of the nose together. Here is part of your um, landing gear. There's a couple of detail parts you have to tend to for A and B version. 
this is the option before you move any further how you want to display your aircraft in stealth mode where it has no weapons visible it's all clean you've got uh, air to air mode where you've got a couple of pylons on the wings and a couple of missiles and the uh, doors are open and you see some of the weapons inside or you can have beast mode where it had carries multiple hard points and loads of weapons I've never seen the aircraft like that not in real life I've seen it like this and this but not beast mode um, and then this is where you want to pay attention to what you need to drill out and if there's anything to add so one millimeter holes have to be attached on the wings or drilled out on the wings sorry that's for the hard points that's for beast mode I'll probably be either doing mine clean or air to air mode once that's done you've got all panels to a fit it's A and B versions mainly inside here is more parts you have to attend to for A and B version this is for the weapon bay open option this is all your detail painting inside your weapons bay so the main bulk of it is white and then all the piping is done in FX3 which FX3 is yellow piping No, sorry, the piping's done black, but the actual tie downs for the piping is yellow and the internal is white, so you've got a array of colours to just to attend to. That's going to take a hell of a lot of time just in that part alone, in painting and detailing. Now we have part of the engine, again, you won't see this part at all. Then you have the uh, bulkheads inside the uh, Bombay area, again. It requires detailed painting and whatever as you work right along. So this is going to take a hell of a lot of time. The rest of the aircraft, when it fits together, it goes together quite quickly. More plumbing and piping. You might want to paint this separately and then attach it afterwards. More detailed parts all inside the aircraft. And your engines and your bomb bay can be attached. It's all just a nice drop fit. There's more detailed painting inside. These are the main landing gear internals again. Detail painting all, all inside there. This is a giant wing spar support that clamps everything together. Once that's painted, you can drop that in, sandwiching the two halves together. And then you've got the uh, doors in the closed position, that is. Or if you want them open at the bottom. Your jet nozzle comes in different sections, which is nice fit. I've seen how they go together, that looks superb, don't need to upgrade that at all, everything, the kit's moulded that good, I don't need any aftermarket unless you're doing the uh, Quintus set or something for the cockpit, but other than that, the kit out of the box is way more than sufficient. Wheels, landing gear, as you work away along, which is pretty standard, left and right, and then this is the landing gear down, doors open, this is the landing gear closed and this is landing gear down doors for the landing gear for the front the uh, electronics uh, uh, countermeasure thingy whatever that is at the front of the aircraft they call it the EOTS system um, more detail parts this requires masking and painting. This is internals again for the uh, Bombay doors to attach to. These are the Bombay doors itself. There's two halves and it requires painting as you work right along. Internals are white, the outside is the uh, aircraft have glass colour. Bombay doors open. This is some of the uh, attachment points inside. Weapon loadouts we have. GBU 31s bombs. We have AMRAM 120C missiles. Uh, to go inside is your option. Again, just be aware what you're doing A version, B version, or C version. Um, so, self, air to air, or beast. These are some of the more doors. 
more doors attaching the doors once they're painted and weathered and done this is for A and B version so air to air and stealth mode uh, if you're having it all closed up stealth mode we have flaps and tail planes pretty simple main wings at the back again more tail planes very simple two halves and they just slot into place very simply trim tabs at the front um, these sections down here are pylons for your aircraft for air to wear and beast mode more weapons and pylons for air to wear and beast mode options so more weapons we have ram 9x's sparrows we have the hard points for that this is for beast mode only this is for gbu 12s payways bombs more bombs which are gbu 12 payways this is for the beast mode version this is all beast mode version attaching all your weapons to the wings uh, these are more wings these are your upper right stabilizers these are the rudder sections at the back yeah the v the v wing at the back these parts and then now you do your cockpit which is strange they have the cockpit built up so late but nonetheless it's pretty basic you've got your bucket seat and then the cushions headrest painting your, your parts as you go along you do get decals for seat belts and stuff but i'm going to stick the pilot in this because you do get a pilot figure so the seat belts are not required to be done um, I was going to get the Quintus set for this when they finally make one, but now I've, I'm going to put the pilot in, it's not needed because you're not going to see any of that detail. So I'm just going to do it out of the box with decals and stuff. This is your pilot figure option if you're going to paint him. So he has his flight suit, it's uh, I believe it's like a dark green colour. His helmet's like a dark black, the visor's glossy black. And as you work way along, and then this is the flight instrument panel. Um, one is sufficient with what comes in the kit because you're not going to see it like I could say it's just a touch screen there is no buttons anymore boarding ladder option open or closed how you want to display it I'll probably have it on the ground with the boarding ladder and the pilot I'll, so I'll probably held the display one because it's going to go in the display case I can't really have it in flight because I don't have the room in my display case to do it that way now you get the option for two canopies, I don't know why they've done that, but we shall see. This is the masking of your canopy, you do get a um, printed mask. It's not die cut, I don't know why they don't do die cut masks for this. The uh, kits from uh, Tamiya, their, their car kits, their um, canopy mask for, for the windshield and stuff is die cut, but why they don't do it for the aircraft, I don't know. Now you've got open or closed canopy, but you do get two options. I think that's the reason why. Um, we shall see. You get your frame in and then your canopy. The canopy is slightly tinted, tinted with that goldy coloured look. And then there's warnings and how I apply decals. I do apologise for being a little bit lengthy. There is a correction sheet. And I don't remember seeing these parts, but we will have to go back through it just to be aware. These are your hard points mainly. Now you've got the first section which is stencil data. These are one to one scale I believe normally. So this is your stencil data for the aircraft. So this is for all variants A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I and J which is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine country options in just in one kit, which is a nice way of marking. So I do like that. I'll probably be doing A or B version, which is American or Australia. <clears throat> I would like to see them do the other variants, do the uh, B and the C and whatever, um, but I don't know if they are going to. And then first color call out is United States version. This is for is this the early version? I'm not sure. It looks like it because you can see the uh, land tape. It's not all blended in. It's different colour.
No, this is the early version of RAM tape for A and B version. Because they give you the RAM tape as decals. So this is RAM tape markings. I don't like the early version because it's just weird. And this is the uh, version that they currently run in today. These, you can see there's no RAM tape, it's all the same colour as the aircraft. So this is what I'd be doing. This is for C, D, E, F, G, H, and... Oh, that's strange. I thought we are, the Americans were running the new version. So we have another one now. The aircraft's all going to be the same colour, but they're, they're just, just a... Uh, um, the uh, aircraft markings or country markings. So this is Japanese. Uh, Royal Norwegian Air Force. Uh, Royal Australian Air Force. Uh, Royal Netherlands Air Force uh, Israeli Air Force uh, Italians Air Force yeah. We have Royal Danish Air Force and Republic of Korea Air Force and our markings they are heat sealed bag nope staple bag this time the damn staple from Tamiya So we have another bag. This very first sheet is all the markings for the countries and some of your round tape sections and stencil data. So the American version and work your way along. You've got Japanese, Norway, Netherlands, Australia, Israeli. They have that part of the tail of the cat. Italians, Korea and Danish or Dutch. Denmark even. There's his visible they have the red everyone else is all like low vis markings it's like all the gray color i can understand why they've done those red because the uh, uk version is the same color uh sorry the same symbol but in gray grayed out so if they had, did those grayed out as well it'd be very confusing so they've done those in red now this giant sheet here is all your round tape sections so if you're going to use this, you can, or if not, you're going to have to do a ton of masking and painting. Be sure call. In, in this little bag, it'll probably be this more stencil data. We've got four sheets, three sheets in this one. More round tape. Come here. Stencil data and cockpit detail parts again like it is just a touch screen this is more than sufficient and then your, your die cut mask which I thought it was going to be but it's not it's a normal 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 mask so you're going to have to cut this out as I say the kits from uh, Tamir their car kits come die cut so I can't see why they can't do it for the aircraft it's not like they don't have the uh, technology to do it and they do you would have thought they would have done it, especially for the price that you pay for these kits. So no further ado, we get straight into the kit and do the top half of the aircraft. So nicely moulded. 
you can see the uh, round tape is, is raised and I think that's probably some of the best out there. I haven't really looked at the uh, other manufacturers but everyone I spoke to have done reviews and said it's quite thick and chunky but this is the best yet so far. Not As I say it's not a very big aircraft but it's nicely sharp and crisp and detailed. Internals you can see all these attachment points where it all fits together. This section here is the bottom. Bottom half of the aircraft. Nicely done. Again, you, you have all that ram tape. This is your weapons bay. I don't think I'll be able to test fit this unless I have to. I'm gonna have to take it off. I don't. I think to do that. Yeah, I'm gonna have to take it off to, to test fit that. So there you are, folks. I've gone ahead and snipped this off, and the fit for this is superb. Nice join for the wings. You see it fits in here. It's a bit sloppy and soft. It's because there's no structural internal parts to to keep it rigid. But just for the outer aircraft, it goes together nicely. I'm impressed. There was a couple of tabs that I need to clean up. They've done their tab attachment points are such a fine. Um, some of them are on the inside, so you just have to clean them up flush. So yes, that's that's pretty damn good. So these parts are not needed now. The next parts are just all internals and wings and flaps now basically. Build the rest of the aircraft up. So this is landing gear. I've noticed they don't ever think quite together or close on the same kind of sprue so you haven't got to go hunting for it so this basically makes up the front landing gear and that's it and then you've got doors your tailplanes and stabilizers and stuff main landing gear is up here and the doors for it so i do like that so here is the wheels assembly main landing gear doors are pretty basic there isn't much ram tape on here because they're, they're the uh stabilizers but it is nice and clean and crisp these are the fillets just to slot inside here so it's not a problem and then the uh, front landing gear has all this raised detail and it looks nice and even in the side walls of the uh, landing gear it's just like electronics and stuff this bag we have some weapons So we have two sprues of these. So we have the uh, paveway bombs, is it? These are your fins for your nozzles. So you need six of those to make up the uh, nozzle. You've got your missile, one of the main wheels, another paveway bombs, hard points, two halves. That's pretty standard how manufacturers do that. They managed to mold it there, missiles. I don't even see this missile. All the way around is one piece. Just like how um, Great Wall Hobby do theirs, missiles, they do theirs as one piece. That's nice, I do like that instead of the two halves. Let's clean up, nice and clean and crisp and moulding. These are two halves as standard, but that's not a problem. And this is two halves, that's not a problem. I do like that, that's nicely done. Now this section here is the internal, so I might actually cut that off and see if that fits nicely. This is actually a heat seal bag. Let's try and get some of this light over here. So this is the internal, wing spar and instructions, and the engine sits this side and your weapons go the other side. 
your cockpit tub this is the detail parts your seat is all together more hard points at this side your pilots here another set of wheels these are the back of the wheels actually so here is your pilot figure arms legs face is all done separately so it's nicely done i'm going to use the pilot here's part of your ejector seat back of the seat i'm not sure who makes the seat for the f-35 i'm pretty sure it might be mark and baker because they do a lot of ejector seats for aircraft there is your main instrument panel like i say it's just one giant touch screen there isn't a ton of stuff inside the cockpit anymore And then we have this part, which is internal, structural, big part. So let's snip this off quickly. Attach more point there. 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 Oh, I'm missing one in the middle. So this section, if I'm not mistaken, fits inside. This section fits here, goes into there, and it locks into these pins. It's not fitting very well because of this, this framing. I've got to take out, and it's it's catching on the front here, but. It does fit, so that's pretty damn good. This makes up the back half of the Bombay, and you obviously got the front part to fit on top of that, the big piece. This is that big piece. So we have more, these are the doors, open and closed option bulkhead attached to this piping all of this most of this and this all gets fits inside here um, this will fit in the upper section so let's nip this off and see how this fits pretty well So this section here I'm not sure what I'm doing. I have to check the instructions. <laughs> right, I had it upside down. So this goes in here. Again, this framing is, is getting in the way. So I can totally understand why. There you are my friends, another kit from Tamiya, 148 scale, F35A, beautiful kit as always, nice crisp clean moulding. Tamiya have come a, a long way in their aircraft, they get their moulding and their engineering down to a T, it's just, I don't know how they managed to pull it off, but if you're interested in getting this kit, I highly recommend this kit, it's, uh, it's going to be a nice clean easy uh, simple build to do. But it comes with a cost it's not cheap but i highly recommend it like comment subscribe and i'll catch you next time